When we look at the Milky Way in the sky, it just seems like a bright band cutting through the night. A milky, slightly diffuse path with more stars packed in the middle. But that band is only the view from inside our galaxy's disk. It's like looking from inside a huge city and seeing only the main avenue. The question is, if the Milky Way is a disk, what exists above and below that disk? What's outside the part where almost all the stars live? To answer that, we first need to understand exactly where we are. The Sun isn't at the center of the Milky Way, nor at the far edges. It lives in one of the spiral arms, about 26,000 light years from the core, circling the galactic center in a large orbit that takes roughly 220 million years to complete. And more importantly, the Sun isn't alone in a perfect, thin plane. It's part of a region astronomers call the thin disk, a relatively narrow layer of stars, gas, and dust. If you could shrink the Milky Way down to the size of a dinner plate, the disk would be incredibly thin compared to its diameter. The galaxy is about 100,000 light years across, but the thin disk is only a few hundred light years thick. It's like a giant vinyl record, huge, but with minimal thickness compared to its width. Most of the stars we see with the naked eye, all the objects we know in more detail, live in this thin band where the sun is too. But just as a city is more than its main avenues, the Milky Way has far more structure beyond the disk. And this is where things start to get interesting. Above and below the thin disk, there's something we can call the thick disk. It's a thicker region, with older stars and orbits that are a bit more tilted. If the thin disk is the busy city center, the thick disk is like the older district, with longer time residents and less organized streets. These stars carry the memory of times when the galaxy was much more chaotic, when collisions with smaller galaxies were far more common. Moving even farther up and down, beyond the thick disk, we enter what astronomers call the stellar halo. Here, the Milky Way's appearance changes completely. There's no longer that flattened, well-defined structure. Instead, we find stars scattered through a huge volume in all directions, with odd, elongated, tilted orbits. Many of these stars live grouped in globular clusters, dense bubbles containing hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of old stars, orbiting the galaxy like small swarms bound by gravity. These globular clusters form a kind of crown around the Milky Way, and almost all of them sit far above or far below the disk. If you could observe our galaxy from the side, you'd see the disk as a thin strip of light and these globular clusters as little jewels spread around it, acting like ancient satellites of a cosmic kingdom. Many are so old that they trace back to the earliest stages of the Milky Way's own formation. And it's not just clusters. The halo is also full of stellar streams, chains of stars torn from small dwarf galaxies that, in the past, came too close to the Milky Way and were destroyed by gravity. These streams form giant arcs that cross the space above and below the disk, like scars in the sky, marks of a galaxy that grew by swallowing others. But all of this is still the visible part of the halo. Most of what exists above and below the disk doesn't shine. It's invisible. We're talking about the dark matter halo. According to everything we know today, the Milky Way is immersed in a large bubble of dark matter, a structure that extends far beyond the stellar disk we can see. This matter doesn't emit light, doesn't reflect it, and doesn't interact with radiation the way normal matter does. We only notice it's there because its gravity affects the motion of stars and gas. When we measure how fast stars orbit the center of the galaxy, we see they move too fast for the amount of visible matter present. If there were only the stars, gas, and dust we can see, the Milky Way would simply fly apart. The only explanation that fits the data is that there's much more mass involved, an invisible, enormous halo enveloping the disk like a diffuse sphere, stretching hundreds of thousands of light years in all directions. So, above and below our disk, there's something that is, at the same time, almost everything and almost nothing almost everything in terms of mass, almost nothing in terms of light. If we could see dark matter, the Milky Way would stop looking like a pretty flattened disk and would look more like a gigantic cloud with a thin, bright core in the middle. But we're not done yet. Beyond the stellar halo and dark matter, there's also the halo of hot gas, what some astronomers call the galactic corona. 
This is extremely rarefied gas at temperatures of millions of degrees, filling the space around the galaxy like a giant, almost invisible atmosphere. It's so diffuse that if you were inside it, you wouldn't feel anything. But it's there, held in place by the Milky Way's gravity. This gas halo is fed by two things. On one hand, leftovers from star formation, material blown out of the disk by supernova explosions and the winds of massive stars. On the other, gas coming from intergalactic space. The galaxy constantly trades matter with its surroundings. In certain regions above and below the disk, we find gas clouds falling toward the Milky Way at high speed, like invisible rivers feeding the birth of new stars. Perhaps one of the most striking structures we know above and below the galactic plane are the so-called Fermi bubbles. They are two enormous twin bubbles, one above and one below the galactic center, filled with high-energy particles that emit gamma rays. Picture two giant flashlights coming out of the galactic nucleus, pointing up and down. They aren't visible to the naked eye, but instruments that observe the sky in gamma rays, like the Fermi telescope, can map these structures. The exact origin of these bubbles is still under debate, but the most accepted idea is that they result from extremely energetic events near the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way, or from intense bursts of star formation in that region. In other words, they're scars from periods when our galaxy's core was much more active, launching jets of energy above and below the disk, inflating these gigantic regions that still carry that ghostly glow today. Above and below the disk is also the territory where many of the Milky Way's dwarf satellite galaxies live. The small and large Magellanic Clouds, for example, orbit our galaxy along paths tilted relative to the main disk. They bring along streams of gas, like the Magellanic Stream, a trail of hydrogen stretching across much of the sky. All of this is part of a slow dance over billions of years in which the Milky Way grows, feeds, and transforms. Meanwhile, the Sun itself isn't exactly stuck to the galaxy's plane. It oscillates above and below the disk, as if riding a wave, slowly rising and falling as it completes its orbit around the center. From time to time, the solar system passes through regions where the density of stars and gas clouds is different. Some studies suggest these movements might even influence how often comets are perturbed in the Oort cloud and sent toward the inner solar system. It's still an active area of research, but the idea reinforces a point. Even though we're in the disk, we're part of a much more complex three-dimensional structure. If we put all of this together, the picture we get is very different from the simple view of a flat galaxy. The Milky Way is a stack of structures. When we look at the sky and see that whitish band of the Milky Way, we're actually looking from inside a much deeper structure. It's like living in a huge building and only knowing the hallway on your floor. Above and below, there are floors you've never visited, rooms you've never seen, stories that happened and left their marks on the walls. Perhaps the most curious thing is realizing that all of this, this whole complex three-dimensional scene, is happening while we live our lives here on the surface of a small planet, worried about everyday problems. Above the thin layer of air that sustains our existence, there's a disk of stars. Above and below that disk, there's a sea of invisible matter, bubbles of energy, heated gases, dwarf galaxies, and star clusters as old as the universe itself. And yet, all of this is part of our cosmic home. It's not something distant or untouchable. It's the context in which the solar system is embedded. The next time you look up and see the Milky Way as a bright band, it's worth remembering. You're not seeing the entire galaxy. You're seeing only one layer. Above and below it, there's a universe of structures we're only beginning to understand. In the end, asking what exists above and below the galaxy's disk is, in a way, asking where exactly we live in the universe. The answer is that we live in a small corner of a bright disk, floating inside a vast, invisible cloud, surrounded by ancient stars, trails of devoured galaxies, and echoes of explosions that happened long before any human existed. And perhaps it's precisely this mix of beauty and mystery that makes the Milky Way one of the most fascinating places we could call home. If you've made it this far, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Share it with that friend who also loves space. Thank you, and see you next time.